Welcome to the second part of data exploration in Pandas. So now let's look at the print and display function. So if we just try to use the print and let's say adult data set dot head. So we can uh, say that the formatting is not that much proper. Even if we use like by default dot head in, uh, instead of using the print, we can see the formatting is still kind of retained. If now we use the display instead of print, let's see what happens. So under the display, um, in the display, sorry, let's put the adult data set dot head and let's look at the rows. So we can see the formatting is kind of preserved here. So it's better to use the display instead of the print if you are trying to use one. Okay, now let's try to look at the unique method which is available here. It is mostly useful when you are trying to find the unique values of a categorical variable like sex, age group, education level, work class, etc. So for the work class, we can see we have these many kind of unique values, private, without pay, self-employed, inclusive, never worked, uh, etc. Okay, so these were some of the basic attributes and methods that we can use uh, to explore the data set. Now let's try to look at the aggregate functions. Although you can uh, get some kind of analysis of numerical variables using the describe method, but if you want to particularly look at the few values using aggregate method, then that uh, functionality is also available here. So so we can use the max here to get the maximum value of hours per week uh, column from our adult data set. Similarly, we can get the minimum value. That's the one. Similarly, you can calculate the mean of a numerical column here as well. So for the hours per week, the mean is 40.43. So this is how you can make use of the aggregate functions to get your key numbers. Okay, so now let's look at our data set again. It seems that it is not kind of sorted. So you can make use of sort values method to uh, sort a data frame according to one column or multiple columns, depending on your requirement. Uh, let's try to sort our data frame according to the education column here. If we execute this statement, we can see now our data set is actually sorted. By default, the sorting is in the ascending order. Okay, so uh, we have got these many kind of rows. If we want to just have a look at the last um, five rows, we can use the tail method. Um, by default, the head method actually gives you the first five rows. So I have used the dot tail method here, and this is how our last five rows actually looks like. Okay, maybe now let's try another example. So let's try to sort values according to the marital status column. Um, so we have now sorted the values, but if we just press the shift plus tab here on the screen, we can see we have got these many arguments for the sort values method and the in place is basically false. So the default value of in place is false. You have ascending uh, set it to as true. If you want it in the descending order, you can set the ascending as false. To see the sorting behavior on multiple columns, don't forget to watch the next video. Thank you.